Hello there and welcome to the grand final episode of Freddie and the Eight. The Panthers in the Eels. The Battle of the Golden West to decide the competition. Mm -hmm. Couldn't ask for any more, boys. Absolutely. Should be a cracker. The Panthers hoping to defend their title and can Parramatta finally throw the hoodoo off their back. The last time they won the comp was all the way back in 1986. It shapes up to be a wonderful Sunday here on Nine's Wide World of Sports. Freddie and the Eighth Grand Final Preview. Let's go. Whoever you follow, it'll be another wondrous journey. Everyone's on the start line now. So let's get this thing on. Oh, 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 oh. Shot. How good is that? Bang, what a hit. From another planet. That's out of this world. I still can't believe what I was watching. Oh, how did they score from that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Brad Fittler going up the middle. New South Wales are going in. Oh, it's the greatest weapon in the game, speed. What has oh, happened there? Good stuff, Gutho. Some of your finest. Yes, it's going to be a ripping day of Rugby League on Sunday. Three games, all here on nine. The State Championship final, Penrith Panthers against the North Devils. NRLW Grand Final will be an absolute belter with the Knights, favourites to win the comp against Para, who only sneaked into the finals, courtesy of that big win against the Broncos, to get through. And then the main game, of course, on Sunday. So regardless of who wins, it's going to be an historic evening because we know the Parramatta hoodoo, if the Panthers win, third club in 30 years to go back to back. Mm. It's not easy. No. It's not easy. And a lot of clubs have tried. A lot of clubs have been there. Mm. Heaps of clubs. Yeah, mm. Roosters. The last one's Brisbane. Who before that? Parramatta. Yeah, in the 80s. Yeah. So there's a big gap between those as well. Uh, so, best day of the year, if you're not at the ground... Best place to be here on Nine, but also on Nine now. Now, boys, you can watch a specific camera feed on the app. We've got Spider Cam, best seat in the house, what got, follows the ball over the top. We've got Joey Cam. Later in the show, we do, actually. So you can look at the coaches. If you're that way inclined, you can just be fixed on Ivan Cleary or Brad Arthur for the whole game. Well, like a split screen. I suppose so. Uh, and <laughs> don't know why you want to do that. Uh, but player camps, Nathan Cleary and Mitch Moses, you can follow them around the whole game. Now, that would be fascinating. That would be. See how much ground they I'll tell you what, the fullbacks would be the other fascinating one. Mm. Oh, yeah. They're machines. Yeah. Both of them. Absolutely. Boys, Fado Archive, it's been good fun this year. The Notice. awkward grand final breakfast. Now, we don't have the grand final breakfast anymore. There's Andrew. Looks thrilled to be there. Mm. There's Fred. <laughs> That's a funny face, Freddie. Oh, look at, look at Scott Prince. Is he hung? There's a couple of sharp-looking dudes. Ben Hornby and Braith. Oh, Cam. Look, look at Cam. Lockie looks like the devil. Simon Mannering looks like he's one of those... Yeah, burying bodies TV. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> You're touching the one with Stace. He isn't touching the trophy before the game. It's supposed to be bad luck. It wasn't that you. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. you won. So, sorry, I'll, now the grand final breakfast is gone... Well, you know, well, I can't say it was the reason for it, but the first year we were in the grand final, we went down there on a Wednesday night. Mm. They put us up at the Regent, the big hotel right down on Circular Quay. We got on the drink. Mm. On the 1990. Sip. We got on the sip, yeah, yeah. and had about $3,000 worth of room service. And Gus came in, didn't he? Gus came in, just shook his head. No, he said, no. whoever was on the drink, be in our little boxing ring, first thing in the morning, the whole team was there. Except for Royce. Was it a punish, the grand final breakfast? Yeah. Early start. Oh, awful. <laughs> if you lived out of town, it was. Yeah. Punishing. Yeah. Did you go down in the morning? No, we went down the night yeah. before. Mm. Punishing. <laughs> yes, it's a busy week off. It wasn't punishing. If we played for Parramatta that year and they had the black skivvies on, <laughs> that would be punishing. I love we, just, we just saw a quick shot of that. Wasn't it at the grand final breakfast when you guys thought oh, they were a bit on tilt, these blokes? Is it's it? Yeah, well... Someone put that up and we went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> OK. You just made it up. Yeah. Now, uh, Andrew, like most people, most exasperated with the bunker's decision uh, to, to overturn the try to Charlie Staines because of the obstruction with Jerome Luai, we have exclusive vision of Andrew's response in the commentary box <laughs> as it happens. Yep, this was it. <laughs> Got the Nike gear on. 
That's the uh, Buffalo Bills he's, coach. He's blowing desperate up. for a sponsor. Right? Yeah, no, no, it's a lifetime deal. <laughs> uh, that's how I felt, and that's how I still feel. Mm. There has to be something done at the end of the year about the bunker. I read Graham Annesley was saying how, um, you know, talking about and trying to add forward passes to it. Mm. Well, they're working on technology about forward passes. Oh, just stop it. Can so I play devil's advocate though? For that, that howl a lot, the Moses, yeah, the Moses one uh, on the weekend. I'm not Everyone calling. I'm not calling that it, was a well, forward pass, but, we, but it's no, missed. So why? I thought it was a forward. Just get on with it. But I see that many forwards. A forward is a forward, all right? Mm. Yep, fair. There's ten a game out of dummy half. Yeah, there is. Mm. So, you know, they all add up. They all equal each other out over the season. It's the first try of the game. Get on yeah. with it. Mm. There's so many out of dummy half, I see. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. No Some forward passes. They can't do it. The bunker Maybe. can only be used they're for try-scoring. They're opposite. chasing the technology. Yeah, but it's t- nearly there. And Graeme, and as he was talking about, them bringing it into the game. Yeah. Well, you were talking the other day. At the game, when they're going through captain's challenges and going through it, well, they killed people the in the crowd are they just... They killed the crowd. Just killing it. The first one, there was expectation and anticipation and, you know, oh, yeah, we won it. By the fifth one, I was just watching people like that, 60,000 people, yeah. nearly asleep. But you know what happens? They're looking for perfection. There is not perfection. Mate, let the game roll on. Just let, let the out. game just go. Just let the game go. Let just the rest let the game job. flow. Hashtag. You know what's going to happen if they take the bunker out? We'll sit here on the couch. No, we won't. No, we won't. And there'll be mistakes. No, we won't. We won't. No way. No way. Really? No. So you're happy to have a series of mistakes and not have the bunker? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Just let the game flow. We'll see how long that lasts. No, no. The bunker, the bunker is here for good. Mm. We know that because, one, they've invested so much money in it. It's a couple of mil, so it's going to stay. But only use it for try-scoring opportunities. Let the game flow. Let the game flow. Captain's challenge, beat it. Just... Mm. Try scoring opportunities and don't look at it. Okay, it's grand final week. Let's spice things up a bit, boys. Favourite grand final you didn't play in? That's a very good hypothetical. 89, easy. Yeah, well, I've got two. Uh, One is 89. I remember exactly where I was. I was about to go camping. I pretty much, because the game went into extra time, we had to walk down the Sussafras Galley up at Springwood. So we're, we're standing at the door watching the end of the grand final. We saw Steve Jackson score the try. And then had to bolt to the mountains. Really? Yep. I remember it forever. Got a hate camping. Um, yes, remarkable game. Do you remember yeah. watching it, Joey? Yeah, sure do. Gee, it was good for you. I think it's the greatest game we've ever seen. Other than that game when Mal scores on the bell in England, is that Old Trafford? Was yeah, that it was. Uh, is that ninety? Game three. Reasonable try. Yeah, that. I think this is the best game I've ever seen. Ever seen. The other best one. Best grand final ever. The other one was 2015. Mm. Cowboys, Brisbane, extra time. The try to Felt at the end. And there's a picture of me. Just I just got up out of my seat where I was working and ran down the sideline, launching myself into the air for some unknown reason. Mm. It but it's great theatre, Freddie. It was to unbelievable. It every time we watch the try back. It's awesome. Fast five. I'm going to make an executive decision. I'm brushing the first fast five because it's about the bunker. Yeah, go on. Brushed. Fast five number two. Did anyone from the PM's 13 game, from a kangaroo's perspective, stick their hands up for a World Cup squad? Cobart. Earth. Yeah? I think Cobart will be there, but mm. he showed he can play centre. Mm-hmm. thought Ben Hunt was excellent at really? a dummy half. Mm. That's it. Get the feeling Ben Hunt's going to be the He'll be there for sure. starting hooker. Yeah, and right. Maybe Harry Grant on the bench. Yeah. Mm. I'd probably they, go the other way. They'll yeah. use them. Like I think Harry would start because Ben Hunt can cover dummy mm. uh, halfback too. Well, Ben Hunt started in Origin, and Harry was coming off the bench, and Ben had then moved the lock and different things. So, mm. Mm. boys, weird one with the trainer, isn't it? The Penrith trainer against Cody Walker. Now, I, I think it was a misunderstanding from what I read. Cody thought the trainer was having a dig at him. Um, well, Cody came out. John Cartwright came out and said. He was disgusted and he should be sacked for life. So I'm assuming John Cartwright has spoke to Jed Cartwright, father and son. But I think Jed has said in well, the does, that nothing does, happened. Well, Jed doesn't want to put himself in a position. But the fact is his dad came out. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming, only assuming that he spoke to his son. So... So the suggestion is that there was a snide comment from the pen of the trainer towards Jed. Is that... 
I had no idea. Pretty I actually cool. know that physio. He's a champion. I couldn't imagine him doing that. He was at the Roosters when I was working there. Yeah, right. Really good fella. I, I just couldn't imagine. Mm. Some of them get excited, though. You know, some trainers you see get excited. They just get in the moment. You know, I'm, I can't imagine him saying, I don't know him, actually. I can't yeah, imagine You can't have trainers me, I think, off at the opposition, though, can mm. we? No, no, not at all. Strange old one. Image of the year, yes or no? The Parramatta fan up in Townsville crying after his team went through to the grand final. What a great shot. Uh, he looks like the bloke that plays Willy Wonka. He's had a is long that, day. Gene Hackman? Uh, Gene, yeah. Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. Or, or Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> he does too. Yeah. Oh. He looks like he's you know what? his hands I saw him at the airport the next morning. Did you? Yeah. I said, mate, we know what it's like. I was crying in Queensland after Origin 3. <laughs> so he goes to every Parramatta game, home and away. What a wow. legend. That bloke. What a great supporter. Yeah. We've got to find him grand final day. Mm. We'd interview him before the game. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. Gene Hackman. How am I going? Gene Hackman. <laughs> Apologies to Gene. Gene Wilder. Yeah. It was him and Richard Pride used to do that. <laughs> Fuzzy Wuzzy was a woman. When he was deaf. He no evil, see no evil. Oh, that's a great show. Was he or wasn't he a woman? You're kidding. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a woman. <laughs> Go watch it tonight. He no evil, see no evil. Yeah, it's one of the Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor is blind, isn't he? Yeah. And Gene Wilder's deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds think, like this show. And I think they're crims. I think they go to jail, though. They go to the clean. That sounds like the best movie ever. <laughs> yeah. What's something from old grand finals you'd like to see come back? Oh. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking when they announced the players and they run on. They run it? on. But it'd mm -hmm. take too much time. I'd like the half-time entertainment, the 100-metre sprint, goal-kicking comp, mm. long-distance kick. Well, what I was thinking about this. You could, you could put together a little Olympics. Yeah, mini Olympics. About strength, speed... Mm. Goal kicking, few skills, fitness. Put some money into it so players would be encouraged to do it. It'd be unreal. Mm. We have to extend the half time break a bit. Yeah, you do it before <laughs> the game, you do it after. You do it over the whole day. Mm. Yeah, good. Um, what songs Barnes are you going to open up with? Mm. Working class man. Yeah. Oh, that'll be his last. How many, how many songs are you singing? I think, uh, he's usually going to be about three. Is he doing any newbies? Does Barnes have any newbies? I hope there? not. I know not. Here's a song I just wrote, Niven. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Daryl Braithwaite. Here's a song. Just sing the horses, horses mate. <laughs> horses, Daryl. Sings it first, horses. everyone walks out. Mm. KC will be his last one. Yeah, no, nah, I think Working Class Man will be his last one. Yeah. Flame Trees. Yeah. Flame Trees, my favourite song. That's a good song. Yeah. Haven't you got the... Tell yeah. us the story about the lyrics to that. Well, I rung Don Walker, who wrote it, and uh, he wrote down the lyrics for me. I got it. Um, framed at home. How good's that? Yeah, it's sick. Big Newcastle. I sat down with him in a cafe in the cross. Is it Hugo's? Old Hugo's yeah. downstairs. Anyway, and I was just talking to him about it. And he, he, he spoke through where he, he wrote it. So what was it about? It's about Grafton, isn't it? Um, I don't know. Mind blank. But he was telling me about where he wrote it and the address of the place, yeah. the sunroom out the front, and where he wrote. Cheap wine, breakfast at Sweetheart. Wow. And you know what I thought? That is a great TV show. Yeah, yeah. Where you get someone, you go through, this room here, this is where I wrote it. Anyway. That is a great TV show. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, the game, thankfully, it's already sold out. In fact, it's sold out before lunchtime on Tuesday. Mm. So, we're not going to break the record because the stadium's <laughs> been reconfigured. The, the first grand final, 99, is the world record for the biggest crowd. Mm. At a game, 109,000 yeah. or something, I think it is. Uh, but we'll have what? What's the capacity? Just think, over 80? I think when we played Brisbane, it was a bigger ground. Hmm. It was in two, well, that was in 2000. Had the wings, yeah, at, yeah. at either end. Yeah. So that was a bigger crowd. Do you, this, this could break the TV ratings for, yeah. for a grand final. Yep. That would be awesome. Mm. So the AFL have pushed pretty hard in the western suburbs of Sydney through GWS, etc. <laughs> This, this is a great, a great example of, of, of where the allegiances of Western Sydney lie because you've seen the, the tribalism between the supporters of both of these clubs. They're fanatical, aren't they? Mm. The one thing with the AFL, you never underestimate them. Mm. They're, very, like they're, you know, they're very... Um, strategic. Strategic with what they do. And they seem to have a lot of money. But I think Western Sydney's a big ask. The colours, the colours in which they wear is pretty much passed down from generation to generation. 
you pretty much follow what your parents do. Mm. And then it goes on through the family. Mm. Um, this is huge for rugby league out west. This Have is you, you, you live out the west. Well, do, you, do you see people grow up wearing GWS, what do they call them, jerseys around the street? Yeah. Not well, right. I don't live there anymore, but... Um, I, I, th I think I think the strategy from from GWS has been to really through the school to push at the the young the young next, school the, ne children. the next generation yeah, yeah. Well, so it's, I'd, it's strategic it's yeah smart. so you might start to see some of that take a foothold in the next yeah. few years but uh, they've just fallen off king. a cliff GWS haven't they they were up there for a couple didn't of years go really good this year no. no how about poor old Wonga Blake this week mm -hmm. how do you reckon he's feeling it was interesting that Simonson came in for Parramatta and played in the centres yeah last week. I thought they'd change it around. I feel like they, they think that uh, Wong is better suited on the wing and Simonson better in the centres as defenders. Yeah. So they feel like that's more important. I think they're just pretty much saying, Wong, you just got to catch him. There's one spot in particular where Nathan nails those floating bombs. And it's from the right-hand side of the field, about 20 metres in. It's not responsibility of Wong, it's responsibility of the chasers. They've got to harass him, mm. give him no time. Billy Slater brought up a real good point to me the other day after, after um, off camera. He said, if you're going to chase him from marker, be offside because you'll get six to go and Nathan will kick it before he realises. Mm. Once again, going into the psyche of Queensland. <laughs> Only joking, Billy. I just thought that was a really good point. The thing is, with Nathan, he's doing them from sometimes this side of 50 or that was just five metres on the other side of 50. Like most people are choosing to put that... There's a cage kick down the bottom and a bit more conventional. That's on his side of 50. So mm. even your worst sets of six, mm. if you can generate a little bit of speed in that last play of the ball, then it gives him a chance to do one of these kicks. That's the, that's the hardest thing, why it's hard to defend, because he does them from his own half. Mm. See, that one there was end over end. It's, it's, it's one area. It's between the 40-metre mark on the right-hand side of the field. Now, if the ball comes down to a certain area... I would just tell, if, you can't, if you're not confident, don't catch it. And it's a responsibility of both centres to get, get back, back and, defend. and the centre from the other side of the field to sprint and the wingers to get back in behind the ball. If you're not confident, just don't catch it. And then we'll get players around it. Mm. Could you see Simonson going to the wing? Or no. would, would that be... No. Defensively, Wanga, when I remember him playing in the centres, defensively, he struggles to read the play. Right. You know what? I've watched him this year and he's done a great job in defence. I've sort of just watched him because, yeah, a couple of years ago when he was with Fergo especially, he really struggled. And between them both, they just struggled to defend there. How would you defend next to Fergo? Oh, it would be, <laughs> be an entertaining day. Yeah. But I've watched him. He's, me, he's got a really good mentality, especially not on his try line, but everywhere else in the game. Just the way he holds and he's not attacking the ball unnecessarily. And he's been a big part of why their defence has improved. Bit different on your own line because you know you only got one decision has got to be made straight away. So, mm. but I've got to say his defence has improved out of sight. Mm. Boys, selection bombshell. Nathan Brown's back for the grand final. Mm. Mm. I think he offers more steel in the mid middle compared to Bryce Cartwright. Look, Bryce offers more an attack definitely with his offloads in the line, but I think uh, coming off the bench with aggression and. What you want when someone comes off the bench in the forward is try to change the momentum. He hasn't played in a long time. He hasn't no. played in a long time, but by all accounts, he's been training the house down. Mm. He hasn't played in a long time. Mm. Does it talk to some tactical, like what they might be thinking from a tactical a perspective? More, I just think a bit more aggro yeah. off the bench. Mm. Maybe, well, he, the way they work junior, you know, having that 10 minutes off in the first half then putting back on, maybe he's perfect. In that role there, going out, you know, around that 25-minute mark and just attacking. The key for, for uh, Parramatta's bench has been Ryan Madison. He has been mm. a revelation. They've named him as a starter again. He won't start. His ball movement, his yeah. passing, his select passing in the middle. Last two weeks, Canberra, you put Junior Polo over without a hand laid on him. Mm. And then last week, you put Regan Campbell-Gillard over with hardly a hand. Mate, he changed the game last week. Changed they gone. Me. They had nothing. Mm. Yep. I think it's a good selection, Nathan mm. Brown. Well, he's a big game player. He's played Origin, yep. so won't be overawed. Well, of course, the Panthers, as a club, are looking for their fourth ever premiership on Sunday night, and they have been one of the most hyped teams in the competition for many years now. Is, uh, is history in the offing for the Panthers on Sunday?
The Panthers rejoice. They're through to the decider again. It goes to Cleary. Another grubber. Another perfect grubber. Another try assist. Oh, oh lean you. Down. Oh. 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 oh, Mitchell has smashed. Louis rolls it through. Taylor. What a play by Penrith. Cleary, he's going to kick for Edwards. It's a pinpoint kick. It's a glorious bit of individual brilliance. Oh, he juggled it. Toho's got her up the bounce. It's Toho against Walker. And he fucked oh. it up. And Toho, he's going to go the whole way and score. What a moment in the game. Oh, that was a hell of a try. Didn't that change the whole complexion of that game? Um, before we get to our special guest, I think you've been too harsh on Isaiah Yo. With his dancing. Mate, we've got, we've got the video to prove it. That's dad dancing. You, when you become a dad, you instantly become a dag. I thought he did his knee there. And that's transferred to his dancing style. He's got the pistols out. Look, he's got bang, 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 bang. We're going to Look town. at them. Boom. <laughs> day two, day three, pistols out. Bang, bang, bang. Let's go. I asked Gus in the podcast earlier who he thinks the, the player of the year has been. Of all the teams. He said Isaiah Yo has been the best player mm. in the comp all year. Yeah. In terms of his his value and his contribution to that team. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Mm. Him and Dylan Ben Hunt. Cam Murray's another one I think has mm. been another level. Mm. Well, you remember back in 2003, or you would, Freddie, sorry, mm -hmm. the Hair Bears. Yep. They took Penrith got by their, storm. Still got their footprints on my chest. <laughs> well, one half of the Hair Bears is the great Joe Nullivout, who I note doesn't have... So much hair as he used to. He's our special guest on Freddie and the Eighth. Hello, Joe. Love of everyone. Thanks for having me. Great to talk to you, mate. Of course, you're part of the staff out there at Penrith in charge of education, but it is another very big week for the club having to go back to back. Yeah, definitely. It's pretty exciting times here. And, um, you know, not only other guests in the club, but also in the community. And uh, there's uh, all you know, um, you know, rugby league out here is. You know, it's a, it's a religion and, you know, it's something that really drives the community and everyone's really proud of the team um, at the moment. Joe, what's, uh, where's your hair bear brother, Tony Pulatua? What's he doing these days? Uh, TP's, um, I think, working with, with his brother, actually. So I think his brother's got a, a maintenance company that did a lot of schools and around the, you know, corporate areas and stuff like that. So, um, yes, he's out there doing that. I think he's a qualified aircon installer as well. So um, he's doing, he's pretty set up. Now, Joe, I want to talk about the, the juniors in, the, in and around Penrith and that area. What are the junior numbers like? How's, how's rugby league out there in, in the younger ages? Yeah, it's, you know, growing here at the club and, um, you know, obviously with the success of the, you know, the NRL squad and that's kind of filtered down in, in our juniors especially, it's, um, you know, it's growing uh, you know, in the thousands as, you, uh, as everyone knows. Um, it's something that's, um, you know, it's that we're really proud of here at the community and um, I guess investing in and you know finding the you know, the next Ivan Clary's and you know the Dylan Dylan Edwards of the you know of the game. Joe, I want to take you back to two thousand and three when the Panthers won the premiership. It was a remarkable run that the club went on that year. In fact it come off a couple of pretty lean seasons but the team it grew in belief as the year went on and the whole campaign sort of caught fire. And culminated in this great grand final win. Yeah, it was uh, like definitely we didn't, weren't expecting you know to you know, have the season that we had when we started. And I think um, I forgot what game it was. And it was actually against the Roosters early on in the year. We I think we won, and uh, I think it's well documented. Yeah, Joel kind of kind of have sprayed the boys, and um, you know we kind of from there we kind of found our, our identity as a team, and you know we kind of went on that run, and you know kind of had a bit of self belief, and um, you know something that kind of really. Um, we kind of built our foundation on uh, to have success that we had. Joe, the, the club must be pumped considering they've won Harold Matthews, no, S2 no, no. Ball. S2 Ball, Jersey Flag, New South Wales Cup. New South Wales, New South Wales Cup. Cup. Yeah. Won pretty much everything in the juniors coming forward. Just the production line out there just continues. Yeah, it's something that, again, we're really proud of here at the club and, you know, it's something that they've been building for years and I think. Um, you know, they from 2019, I think um, they've had. Oh, sorry, we 2018. You know, 22 of you know the current squad. I think even more now that uh, the current squad uh, have come through the juniors, and it's 
and, and as you kind of mentioned, you know, HG Ball, uh, you know, flag on the weekend the cup of you know one of their competitions and you know Harold Matz were one game away as well. So, you know, all our all our squads made the top four. So um, yeah, it's something that, you know, it's gonna put the club in good stead for the future. All right, Joe. Enjoy the grand final. Another memorable night for the club coming up Sunday. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ed. Great to talk Good to job. Joe Nullivau. Boys, premierships are obviously very difficult to come by. Mitch Moses sacrificed last week. What a week for him. I mean, it started with such yeah. sad news with the passing of his grandmother. Then he decided to go away with the team and miss the birth of his first child, all to get the to, team through. To be fair, court. I think everyone needs to know that the baby was due on Monday. So it all happened very quickly, the birth. So what a beautiful oh. bubba. Have you seen a prettier baby? No, he's just... <laughs> how beautiful. I texted him and said he needed some DNA testing on the baby. I, I, no, we're talking a lot about Mitch, Mitchell, but the person we should be applauding is his partner, is it Bree? Yeah. She's very understanding. This, it's a, look, it's a huge commitment for Mitchell, but for her to actually allow Mitchell to go away and do that, it's she's the one that should also be really applauded. Mm. What a beautiful you know when you go and visit your mate's kids or when they have a baby in hospital, you go in, you go, Oh <laughs> what a beautiful baby. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, but that, but that, but that, he said your mate's kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your kids are beautiful? Like, oh yeah. But uh, that is a beautiful baby. Mm. Well done to all parties. Mm. All parties. I think there's only two of them involved. Oh, the doctor's there doing this. <laughs> hey, well done to the, the doctor. Well the done nurses. to the whole support staff. Yes. Doctors and nurses. Did you ever play doctors and nurses when you were <laughs> I bet you did. Uh, we've got a game for you, boys. Cops and rock. Not doctors and nurses. Name this grand final moment. So I'm going to show you a piece of vision. You've got to tell me what happens next. Let's go. Away again to his 5 8 and then to the captain gal. Back to Sattler, back to Campbell. Campbell is 15. Luke Pritter scores from dummy out. What happens next? I'll go as a Scott Sattler tackle. No. Ooh. What are you going to say? Ooh, Scott yeah. Sattler runs down the skinny. Yeah, what did you say? Uh, you I'm going to say, yeah, Luke Pritter's try. Is it the other end? Roll the tape. Oh, was it? And now it's from Pritter's away the girdler. It's come off the feet of the Roosters. Fiddler's gone after it. Then he scoops the ball away to Burns. Burns puts on a fend. Then he puts on a fend. When he tripped, yeah. it was pretty wet out there. I felt for old Skinny, he's had to live with that his whole life. He had a great moment, Skinny, over in England. That's one of the greatest where he did something similar. They ended up getting beat in the game, but he did a, had a great moment in the corner. So I feel like having that, having to live with that, he, he, you watch that a lot. Is that Skinny sh sh Shaming? Skinny Burns. That's his yeah, name. But skinny can't... legs. Really skinny legs. His well, nickname was fatty, Skinny. I suppose Fatty gets called Fatty. You're Joey. I'm yeah, but, but we're not fat shaming or skinny shaming. Well, it's just his nickname, mate. Well, mate, we live in a different world. You're becoming stuff. politically correct. Very. What's your nickname, Tomo? Tomo. Moment number two. <laughs> Here we go. The defence line puts the grubber in the back. Steve Ranoff scores. Ranoff try. Big test for Carr. Look at him. What about him as a player? Oh. Which one? The Pearl or Willie Carr? Oh, Willie Carr. <laughs> pretty can. good. Now, let's have a look at one of the great grand the final board. moments. Oh, listen it. listen to the call. Ranoff. Listen to the call. Ranoff. We haven't seen much of him today. Now take a look at him as he crosses the halfway. They won't catch him. He's heading for the corner oh. and he's over. Rinoff. Good catch with the What an iconic try. Four. What a great try. What a great pass. One of the original uh, Prince of Centres. The great Steve Rinoff. Moment number three. What have we got coming up here? Does the uh, Greg Inglis go in? It's 3 nothing, Andrew Johns. How Someone, good are you going? The oil is working. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that dumb little half 2014. Uh, 47 years South second. Sydney had to wait for you don't realise in this game, it was close. Yeah, it was. With 60, mm. 60 65 minutes. And then Those grand just, finals are. Like the ones that blow out, it's just the same. Bang, bang, bang. Mm. Except for the Manly. Storm one. Yeah, that was 40. Didn't they get flogged one year too, Manly? Did Storm flog them the year before or the year after? Mm. Well, well Canberra no, pumped when Cam missed Canberra it. pumped the Bulldogs, did they? Oh, yeah, 94. Yeah. Well, it has been a very big gift for Parramatta, as you can tell. All the fans are very excited. Are they about to break 
history. 1986, last time they won the Premiership. Will that be the case on Sunday night? The Eels are into the 2022 NRL Grand Final. Marnie Delane. Oh, oh Zemo! Oh, oh. This is right up to the line. Then an offload. Oh, the oh. flick! The flick around the corner. Moses has scored. Here's Dylan Brown. Brown steps past all of them. What a try. Oh, big shot. Oh, beautiful hit. Good medicine. Oh, Lord, one hand to Moses. Moses in the clear. Moses for the corner oh. against Savage. I think Mitchell scores. That is beautiful try. Gee, it's unfair to be that size, Junior Polo, and have those skills. Mm. He's on fire, isn't I he? I think when he was... He was in the long, the wrong line. So he got in the line, the front row was body, but then he snuck over and got the skills of a halfback. Mm. Boys, 1986, I don't know whether you know this, but Mick Cronin broke down on the way to the grand final driving from Gerringong. Uh, didn't he just... He caught in a traffic jam or something? Well, anyway, something like that. Yeah. He only got there with half an hour until the game started. Well, Here's a bit of old news vision we've found about that. As the fans streamed into the cricket ground for the early games, the man whose lateness was really a worry was Parramatta's champion goal kicker Mick Cronin. Mick's car was involved in a hefty pile-up on the freeway coming up from the south coast, and he was lucky to make it to the ground just half an hour before the kickoff. Oh, it's the late great Mike Gibson driving from Jerringong. Yeah. How you about that? You've been down to his pub, Cron? Yeah, long time ago. Yeah. It's one well, of the uh, great, mm. great spots in Australia, Jeringal. He was a a, a a unique centre, wasn't he? Like you know, you had around that Stella. time, you had like you know your Brett Kenny style, uh, Gene Miles, Steve Alley. Steve Alley had sort of you know swift moving Steve Rogers. Mick Cronin was just like this big man who just mm. stand in tackles and run through people. Always seem to just shuffle through people. People would go in, wouldn't go in style, hard enough, yeah. and he just shuffle through. So they asked him to uh, help out and coach the local first grade team down there like, I don't know, 20 years ago for a season or two. I think he only retired in the last few years. Mm, yeah, wow. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? What a great contribution. What a grand final entertainment, boys. Now, we've already talked about Barnsley. Yeah, there's been some famous flops with grand final entertainment. We bring this one out every year. Billy Idol. Billy Idol. <laughs> no, I paid the power bill. What about the op? Are there any Roosters fans here? Wait for some power! <laughs> so did he play, end up playing? No. Oh, that's fantastic. No. It's great that he actually knew who was playing. At least he had a bit of material to pad with yeah, while they were trying to turn the switch on. He had it written on his hand. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, the Optus TV that split apart. Yes. That was the famous one. And this was before the 1991 grand final, Brad. It's a little bit Old oh, mate lands it. on the roof. Stop it. Boom. That's not oh. very dangerous. <laughs> Oh. oh, that's my worst nightmare. Oh. That must have been uh, 88, one of the first grand finals. No, that was, your, that was 91. Oh, was it? Before the 91 grand final. Yeah. Boom. Straight on the roof. I like the meatloaf one at the AFL when he was just oh. absolutely sideways <laughs> and just <laughs> blind. I don't, know, I don't know if that... I think he might have just uh, had lost at that stage of his meatloaf. career. Right. Um, oh, Freddie. Vodka. Yep. They're going to throw you at the whiteboard. All right, let's go. So... You like to use the whiteboard with your origin teams in particular. We're going to get you up there and you're going to address your Parramatta I'll team I'll before address, the grand final. I'll address the game. Right. I'll address the game. The game. Where the game's going to be won. Well, to do it, for we're going to channel uh, Jack Gibson. Jack We've got Gibson. Jack Gibson's old coat from wardrobe Did for Jack you. Jack used to be on the darts as well. No, I don't think he was on the darts. Gee, that's a, that actually suits you. Is that his? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's the real article. It looks Mate. like it. <laughs> You're off your head. See if, see if there's a few 50s in the pocket. Right, eh? Now, if I was Jack Gibson, I'd say run a tackle art. The other bit of advice Jack gave me, which would be very crucial for the game, is you can never kick a ball high enough. Anyway, the part of the game which I think is going to be crucial is going to be the back end of the Parramatta sets of six and then the start of the Penrith sets of six. So if you picture a player the ball here, You'll have Nathan Cleary on this side, Brian Tyo over there, Charlie Stain. And over this side, Ryan Madison's going to be the important player. 
Sean Lane. I'm just trying to think of his number. 11, hopefully. So what we're thinking is the back end of the Parramatta sets are going to be very important. What they're going to want to do is run big Sean Lane at Nathan Cleary. Get his tackle count up. If they can dominate that tackle, that'll stop a lot of their play. Also, it's this offload around tackle three and four of Parramatta. Whoever gets the better of that, a good chance will get the better of the game. If they finish sets of six here, what it allows is the halfback, Mitchell Moses, to one, put his cage kicks over to Charlie Stain, who isn't as good a runner as Brian Tyo. The other one is Dylan Brown trying to find some space in behind Brian. If you can get in behind him, make him pick up the ball, you're going to limit his moves. He ran for about 300 metres last week, while Taylor May is in there carrying those extra yardage runs. You've got Charlie Stain, who did, can't quite bring the ball out like those fellas. Then all of, all of a sudden, it's the tackle one, two, three of Penrith. You've got to nullify Brian Tyo. Dylan Edwards is going to be a key. Every time Dylan Edwards runs, you need to have a line in front of him. The hard thing is he picks and chooses his runs when he wants. The early ones, you might be able to nullify and make sure you've got a straight line, which Parramatta have done very well. If he wins that tackle, what it leads to is Brian coming into another run, then all of a sudden you've got Appy Corusau dominating the back end of the set, then Nathan Cleary gets to kick where he wants. This is going to be the important part of the game. Ryan Madison plays a huge part. If they can win these couple of tackles, or if Penrith lose these couple of tackles, I think that'll go a long way in deciding the game. Thanks, Coach Gibson. Good insight from Freddie. It's a good jacket. You great got jacket. You got yourself a new coat. Oh, there he is. What a great fella. He caught, he, uh, he nicknamed you Freddie, didn't he? He nicknamed me Freddie. I walked in, uh, State of Origin, and he said, what's your name? I said, Brad. He what's said, your name? <laughs> he said, sit down, Fred. And yeah. that was it. Mm. He used to come in towards the end of his life. He used to come in and uh, he lived in the uh, he lived in the Shire, I think. But he used to come and watch a lot of Eastern Roosters games. Mm. And he'd always come over and have a chat. That's great. He was fantastic. I really enjoyed his company. And those couple of things come true. He said, you can never kick a ball high enough. And I remember that in a game against Canberra. It was the end of the game. I had nothing on. And I just went, all right, I just can't kick it high enough. And kicked it. Shikoski dropped it. Finchie picked it up and we scored. Wow. And the other one was he said, don't play tennis or squash. And I did that and I twisted my ankle for the 2000 grand final. There you go. His legacy lives on. Let's have a look at the menu for Sunday. Feast of footy. Can't wait. So the first game, well, we're on air for the Sunday footy show, of course, with the gentlemen. The state championship final, the Panthers versus the North Devils from 120. Can Newcastle win a premiership this year? They'll be going off up there in Newcastle for this. There'll be a huge audience watching from Newcastle. This is great what the NRLW is doing. There's some players in there. Here's Bobby Law, my mate's daughter. I'll tell you what it shows you. From day one, and everyone said it, that when Millie Boyle walked in the joint, she just showed leadership. Leadership. Mm. And all of a sudden, you've got a brand new team playing in a grand final. Did you see her try last week where she just... It was Steve Jackson-like. She just douched about three of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's how do, you buy, stars, how do you buy leadership? You need to buy. There leadership. is stars all over the park here, and these uh, these girls are going to inspire the next generation to come through. And participation levels will be huge. But he's a good player. The Paramount fullback. Oh yeah, she plays like Roger. Gail Broughton. What a gun! Footwork like Roger. What's her name? Vasa, Gail yeah. Broughton. She's won the Olympic gold and silver medal in rugby sevens. Oh, she's good. Mm. She's so good. Great Do you reckon football. another Newcastle number seven is going to win the equivalent of the Clive Churchill medal? I think I it's think a Karen so. Murphy medal. I think so. Grand final day. She's it's 17. Got, she's going to be the dominant player for the next 15 years. Oh. We could so be I've got to say that fullback would have something to say about it. Mm. There's some good players out there. I know she's good. Righto, boys. Who wins the comp? And who wins the Clive Churchill medal? Penrith, just Dylan Edwards. Penrith, golden point, happy Coruscant. Dylan Edwards, the forward. He tipped Parramatta in his tips. No, no, no. I said Parramatta at the start of the season. Now it's come to the game. It's actually happened. I'm going for Penrith. OK. But they were my tip at the start of the season. I thought they were the ones that were building to a grand final. Thanks for the year, boys. It's been good fun. Mm. And look yes. forward to being out there on Sunday with you both. Sunday mm. footy show Can't right wait. through until the end. That is Fred in the 8th for 2022. Enjoy the grand final. It'll be a beauty.
Soy Laro.